number so we can move on this. It's 325. This meeting was supposed to start at three. Who's here from the committee? No, you don't. Thank you. Councilwoman, it's fine. But I need I need a committee. Thank you. Councilman Miller, are you here as a visitor of the committee or have you been designated as a committee member for purpose of a quorum? Yeah, I should have been leaving too for that same event. Thank you for covering that. But do you need to be anointed? Empowered by the president. He said, okay. Wait, so procedurally we have a quorum because the president anointed Councilman Miller with that power vicariously and we have only till four. Yes, we've started. Okay, well, we're going to get, could we have a roll call? I think mercury is not retrograde anymore, but maybe it still has some residual effects. Can we have a roll call? As a reminder to all in attendance, this meeting is being recorded and live streamed on the county YouTube page. Calling the roll, Ms. Simon. Here. Ms. Turner. Here. Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones is absent at the moment. Mr. Schron. Mr. Schron is absent at the moment. Ms. Stevens? Ms. Stevens? She, she popped in and said she's here. And I'd also like the record to reflect that Mr. Miller is in attendance. Perfect. Have a quorum. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Do we have a quorum if Councilman Miller leaves when he leaves? We do. We still will have a quorum with the three of us? Yes. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any public comment? And I have a motion to approve the minutes from September 21st, 2022, please. So moved. Thank you. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay, aye. minutes are approved. The first matter referred to committee is 2022-0150. Can I please have that read for the record? Resolution 2022-0150, authorizing a grant award to Cleveland Water Alliance in the amount not to exceed $1,450,000 to establish the water economy growth initiative program commencing upon contract signature of all parties for a period of two years. Thank you, Director. Uh, thanks, Councilwoman. Uh, uh, Mike Foley, Director of uh, Department of Sustainability with me is Brian Stubbs, head of the Cleveland Water Alliance. Uh, this is, um, we, uh, we'd originally brought this uh, grant agreement up in uh, early September and it was uh, put back till today. There's some questions that you had regarding kind of uh, uh, the nature of some of the, the dollars, how the, some of the dollars were being spent. And so uh, we've uh, asked uh, Director uh, uh, Stubbs to, to respond to some of those and, and we've changed the amendments, changed the language of the resolution a little bit also in, in uh, reaction to some of your concerns. Some of your concerns were about large water attractions. So some of this, these dollars will be spent on trying to look to businesses that need a lot of water. Lake Erie has a lot of water. The Great Lakes have a lot of, a lot of water. We're going to have more water. And so as we're using these dollars to help with attraction, uh, business attraction activities, uh, your concerns were making sure that the, the health of the lake is maintained or uh, improved, actually. So, so uh, uh, kind of in, in discussions with your staff and, and the Water Alliance, we've uh, amended the resolution to make sure that whatever water attraction work is being done is only being done to businesses that report their environmental uh, uh, ESG goals, uh, uh, environmental sustainability goals, I think to uh, national organizations, ESG goals. And so that is where the dollars will be spent for that large water attraction work. And, um, and also that we'll be giving 100, out of that is $270,000, 135,000 of that will be given uh, the first year and then the second tranche of that money won't be given uh, until uh, the Water Alliance and Team NEO, which is in charge of doing that work, will come back in front of council to this committee uh, in year two. And then that, that money will be uh, uh, flexible in terms of our ability to grant that second tranche of money out for, that, for those purposes. So that, more than willing to take any questions, and, and uh, Director Stubbs uh, can answer questions as well. Well, 
just to refresh the committee and those who were observing this water economy initiative, I had concern that we were going to be spending money attracting businesses that would deplete our resources that are going to be so valuable beyond belief as we move forward with climate change. We see in the West and the South, the water is drying up. The businesses that operate along that, those waterways, I'm sure, have impacted that. And then for them to carpet bag and come up here and deplete our lake and potentially pollute it with whatever um, chemicals that they emit, it's not going to be perfect. I had great concerns about that. And I had some questions that were answered somewhat um, to my satisfaction that I guess we just have to con mitigate the harm as best we can, potential harm. Do you have any comments? Because Ms. you're shaking your head. No, th thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a grave concern both to our organization and to me professionally. You know, I was recruited to come to this region running the Oberlin Project for Dr. David Orr on how do we sink more carbon than emit while still growing a, a regional economy. And, you know, I had greener pasture offers and, you know, on the coast, and I said, no, this is, this is where me and my family want to be. So I built the Water Alliance on this simple hypothesis that growing our local economy and increasing water quality are not mutually exclusive. And so that's what we've really started to build here. And I think there's a good example of, you know, companies that will use Cuyahoga River water for their cooling towers. They treat that water before returning it to the Cuyahoga River. And so it's in better quality than what it was when they took it out. And it's those sort of innovations and technologies that's really the driver of this work, the 70 technologies that we're testing right now. It's all about things like that. It's things about lead service line detection, E. coli detection. We're doing a lot of work in microplastics. We've got a very exciting spin out from Case Western. So you're hitting the nail on the head, and we couldn't agree with you more, and we're with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the work that went into responding to my questions and to understand that some of these dollars are going to be spent with a test lab, which will help us evaluate, especially the, the realm of microplastics that we really need to continue to monitor as we use plastic in excess amounts since COVID. Okay, great. So I'm satisfied with this um, resolution. Do you have any questions? Councilman Miller. Okay, I guess we can vote. Um, I'll, I'm going to make a motion to move this matter to the next full council meeting with a recommendation of passage for second reading. Me, Madam Chair, do we need to uh, vote on the amended legislation? Oh, I'm sorry. 2020. Yes. So first, I have a, this. Um, the amendments in front of us. Can I have? A, I'm going to move that we um, pass the resolution amending. 2022-0150. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Okay. Three of us ayes. No nays. Substitute is in front of us. Can I have a... I'm going to move that this substituted motion be moved to the next full council meeting with a recommendation of passage for second reading. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're going to go second reading at the next full council meeting next week. Thank you for your work. Thank you so much. Okay, next item on the agenda agenda is Resol 2020. Yes, I'm sorry. Resolution 2022-0254, authorizing an amendment to Memorandum of Understanding and Agreement among Cuyahoga County, Say Yes Cleveland, Cleveland Metropolitan School District, Breakthrough Public Schools, Near West Intergenerational School, Horizon Science Academy, and College Now Greater Cleveland Incorporated to establish funding responsibilities for year four of the Save Yes Cleveland Strategy Program for the period July 24th, 2019 through July 23rd, 2022, to add Hope Academy, Northwest Campus, and Northeast Ohio College Preparatory High School as parties to the Memorandum of Understanding, effective July 23rd, 2022, to extend the time period to July 23rd, 2023, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $9,256,000. Good afternoon, David Merriman, Department of Health and Human Services. I'm joined by my colleague, Jennifer Crossman. We're here uh, bringing this item back to this committee. Uh, I understand it was introduced, uh, I believe, at the end of July. There were some questions, and uh, we've answered the questions. We're joined today also by, in, by Diane Downing of Say Yes, 
uh, to Cleveland, or say yes to education, as well as uh, her colleague and Matt Carroll. So I, I know the item was introduced, There's, it's been discussed, and uh, we'd gladly answer any questions. Any questions? I do have a question. Yes. It's a little, um, actually from the last uh, committee meeting when we were discussing foster care. Do we have students in the program that are in temporary placement and do they qualify for these services, especially the seniors? Do they have access to scholarships? Yes, they all qualify and have access to scholarships. Thank you. Thank you. We have a substitute in front of us amending the amount of the um, allocation based upon our health and human service levy budget that we passed, as well as some school funding that's flowing through us directly to say yes. So this resolution, um, we need to vote on the substitute first. I'm going to move that the substitute be accepted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we'll move into the full resolution for a motion to move this to the next full council meeting. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Before you vote, I have one additional question, sure. if I may. Okay. And my question is, uh, uh, do we have any update on, uh, on the availability of 4E funding? Uh, do we expect that? to continue at the same low level we've seen in, in the last year or two, or, or do, do we foresee some improvement? So I, I will also invite Diane Downing up if she want to, wants to speak on this matter. But at this point, we continue on the same trend that, we, that we've experienced. There are very few children that are in the SAIS program that are in foster care at this time. We answered the councilwoman's question. There, it does occur, but it's not at the scale that we initially proposed and what was included when we developed the budget. And we continue to pursue other options. We continue to look at whether 4E can be added back in to this program at a greater level. So, Madam Chair, D Director, children that are not in foster care are not eligible for 4E funding, is that correct? I'll, I'll ask Diane, I'm sorry, I'll ask Jennifer or Jackie Fletcher to speak on it if, if, uh, if they want to Add, uh, uh, add detail, but that 4E is limited to children who are candidates for foster care. And that means they're either in foster care or there's a case plan that states that they are to, uh, to be considered for foster care. Jennifer, anything you'd add to that? No, that is correct. And that comes from the Family First Prevention Services Act that was uh, implemented after we began the work with Say Yes Cleveland. Okay, thank you. Thank so, you for the question. So originally we were told that 4E would cover 50% of the four-year program just about, and there was that was wrong information. There was never any um, basis to s substantiate 4E funding for, for a purpose other than the foster care connection that was discussed. And um, so unfortunately that's where we are landing. Um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to say to the committee that um, we're very grateful for the help and support that the County Council has given us and the administration um, over the last four years. And um, certainly in, appreciated the opportunity to meet with you, Chair Simon. Um, just wanted to say that we understand that going forward, um, levy funds cannot be looked at to substitute for Title IV E funding that we have work to do along with the uh, county administration and the council to seek other sources of funding. Um, we are appreciative for the ordinance that is being reviewed right now. Um, it will take us to about March of next year. So, um, we will be working very diligently, coming back to you um, with other uh, sources, but it, it won't cover the full year right now. And I know we talked about that, Chair. Thank you so much. Well, we're glad to get you into the spring and, and hopefully that can be remediated by what we discussed. Thank you for your work. We know it's good work.
There's no doubt about it. So we have a substitute in front of us. There's no more questions. I think we voted on the substitute. Madam Clerk, is that correct? And I had a motion, yes, I think, already in place to move it to the next full council meeting for a second reading with a recommendation of passage. Do you, is there a need for a suspension because yes, of the is. timing? <laughs> yeah. so, so the recommendation is going to be for um, the second reading um, passage suspension. Suspended. Yes, please, Chair. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so this will be up for um, vote next council meeting. Thank, Thank you. you. And good luck with getting the gaps closed. Okay. Next item, resolution 2022-0331, awarding a total sum not to exceed $250,000 to the Global Ambassadors Language Academy for the purpose of renovating a permanent school building located at 3349 West 125th Street from the District 3 ARPA Community Grant Fund. Oh. Hi, we are so excited to be here. Um, my name is Marin Rogers and I am the founder and executive director of Global Ambassadors Language Academy. I believe you all have slides um, in hard copy and also that will be projected on the screen. Um, but I um, first want to introduce some of our students. Um, so go ahead, Kenneth. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Kenneth Valentin. Soy estudiante de sexto grado en Gala. Gracias por la oportunidad de contarles acerca de nuestra escuela. Good afternoon. My name is Kenneth Valentine. I am a sixth grade student at Gala. Thank you for the opportunity to tell you about our school. Good afternoon, my name is Jasmine Moore Hinton. I am a sixth grade student at Gala. Gala is preparing me and my younger brother and sister to be an ambassador in the world. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Raid. Soy un estudiante de quinto grado en Gala. Mi escuela es fantástico. Yo soy agradecido para aprender español y tener buenos maestros. Good afternoon, my name is Raid Green. I am a fifth grade student at Gala. My school is fantastic. I'm grateful to learn Spanish and I have good teachers. Xiao Hao, what the means is a panting thing. What is a teenage issue? Shang, what's a gala? She see. Jing Guan, what mean and be it? What Hong Kai sing, what the Didi may make her you sing the Jiao Shi Lo. Good afternoon. My name is Katie Perkins. I am a seventh grade student at Gala. Although I am Graduating next year, I'm happy. I'm very happy my, that my younger brothers and sisters will be able to enjoy a new school school building. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Gabe Costa. I'm the principal at Gala. I appreciate your time and attention. I'm the principal at Gala now, and with your assistance and generosity, I look forward to being the principal in our new building. Thank you for allowing us to introduce ourselves. We have other members of the project team here. I won't have them come up, but I want to point to them. So we have our consultant for historic tax credits Naylor, um, with Naylor Wellman, Wendy is here. Um, Julia with Bowen is here, um, our architect um, and engineers, and then um, Shook Construction, Eric and Tom. So if there are any questions, um, I will do a brief three minute presentation if that's okay. Yes, yes, okay. Um, so a little bit about GALA. Um, we are a public tuition-free um, bilingual education school. We have a program in both Mandarin and Spanish. Um, our immersion program means that students learn every day through the language for the majority of the day, receiving um, instruction in both math, science, and social studies and language arts all in Chinese or Spanish. There is an English part of the day every day, but the at least half or more is in the target language. The goal of the school is for students to become bilingual in their target language, as our wonderful students have demonstrated. So we're very proud of them for that. Um, Gala is the only Mandarin immersion school in the state of Ohio. 
um, and we are the only language immersion school in Northeast Ohio in Cuyahoga County. Um, we are also an excellent school. Uh, in 2022 ODE's report card, uh, we were ranked the number one school in our neighborhood, um, zip code 44111. Um, and out of 37 public K-8 schools on the west side of Cleveland, we're ranked number four based on academic achievement. Um, and this is something to be very proud of as our students learn the majority of their content in another language and then take standardized tests in English and perform well. Um, the population we serve is majority economically disadvantaged with 65%, 70% Cleveland, 25% of those students live in our neighborhood. Um, and we have 43% students that are Hispanic and 55% students of color. You can see that in the pie chart and also in the map in the corner. That map shows where all of our um, families live. Um, and it's a pull from 33 different suburbs uh, as far as Solon, Akron, and Lake County. The school is still relatively new. We opened in 2016. Um, the year we opened, we just had 60 kids, K and one. Um, we've been adding a grade level every year. And now in our seventh year, we have K7, 300 students. Next year, we will grow and finally add eighth grade and have a projected enrollment of 366 students. Uh, and by FY27, um, fiscal year 27, we are projected to have 500, over 500 students. Next slide. Next slide. Or do I click something? Sorry, first time here. Just the green button? Sorry, okay. Um, so we're successful in growing. Um, we've been a neighborhood asset. We are currently in a rented facility through the Catholic Diocese. We're in the former St. Vincent de Paul Parish School. That's pictured um, on the right in the middle, middle picture. Um, this year, we provide 45 jobs, 33 full-time, 12 part-time, and then we partner with more than 10 partner organizations. We are projected to have 66 jobs in FY27 as we continue to grow, um, 46 full-time, 20 part-time, and um, more partner organizations. With our growth, we need a new facility and we need to own um, our school. And so last year, as CMSD put many buildings up for auction, um, we purchased a building that is a dream come true. It is in our neighborhood. We can stay in our um, neighborhood and be a community asset. Um, it's just nine blocks down the street. And um, it's a beautiful building. We just put it on the National Registry of Historic Places. Um, it was already landmarked by the city as historic, but it had not yet been registered at the national level. Um, so it is now registered. Um, as, we, as we've purchased the building, um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. It was vacant for six years. During the time that it was vacant, it was vandalized. The copper was taken. Other things were broken. And um, we believe there are, are continued break, breaking and entering and possible squatting. Um, but with our rehabilitation plans, we will be adding a new STEM lab, an updated gymnasium, an improved art space, and an updated auditorium. Here are just some pictures of um, what the building currently looks like. Um, as you can see, it needs lots of love um, and it needs students in, in the space to occupy. Um, we do have renderings of the auditorium provided by Bowen. Um, it's one of the most significant parts of the renovation project. Um, and it, we will be maintaining the historic part of the building as it's now been registered. So with the auditorium, um, we will be removing all of the bricks that have blocked the windows. Um, so you can see in the um, renderings, the windows are there. The other thing we're doing is we're leveling the floor into two big um, levels so that it can be used more um, just for like 21st century learning. So we'll have movable tables and chairs. Um, it'll still be used in an, as an auditorium, but more. And the boiler room, which is a very scary picture, and <laughs> scary room to be in, um, that will all be replaced with a new HVAC system. 
So here's our project timeline. Um, we've broken it up into three phases. Um, the first phase is complete. That was doing a search for the building, purchasing it. Um, we are now towards the end of phase two um, with the help of Bowen and Shook Construction and our owner's rep, Daryl Young. Um, and we are almost at the point where we are shovel ready. Um, so we are finalizing our development documents um, and then the next phase of that will be our construction drawings and construction administration documents. Um, phase three is our construction phase and that will, um, that's planned to last for a year. So hopefully we can move in um, for the 2024-25 school year. Here is the budget. Um, for renovating the facility in total, it is just under $16 million. Um, two, almost two and a half million of that is contingency. Um, you can see where the different um, uses of those funds are in the budget. There's also, um, I've inserted just images of the um, development documents so you can see plans for the building. So I'm just going quick, my, being mindful of the time. Um, the next slide is just showing more of the plans to renovate the building. If there are any questions, we'll be happy to answer. Um, and finally, here is our um, project financing plans. So, so far we have secured just under $2 million um, and we have a plan to secure the remaining amount. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have or any members of our project team can answer. Thank you. Thank you, good work. We appreciate it. Any questions? I have a question, if no one else does, about the ARPA brownfield money for yes. 700,000. Has that been secured? Um, no, so that is in the anticipated um, planned funding. You have looking? you applied for that? Uh, it is a process. So um, we have applied for other ARPA funds um, with District 2. Uh, we applied in round one, and we are applying again for round two, which is due next week. Is that part of your ARPA dollars will come from districts two and three, or is there a third source um, that so you're the, seeking? Yes, so the, I've just kind of put it in all in one category because it's the county, but the other source is um, the Brownfields program for abatement of um, asbestos and lead, um, which we do have to do in the building. Um, and it's just a process in getting that. It's ultimately a loan. It's a 10-year loan, I believe at 1%. Um, and it's, it's expected to be paid after 10 years. So that all makes up that 700. And what about the city of Cleveland support from Ward 16? What's the likelihood of receiving that? Um, I feel positive about it. Um, it. I applied for that with Councilman Casey and he's received the proposal and I will be following up with him. But he's um, a big supporter of the school. He's come to visit Gala. Um, our ribbon cutting and probably three times after that. So he's very aware of our project and plans. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Councilman Miller. Madam, Madam Chair, Ms. Rogers, the, uh, the three tax credit applications total uh, more than six million of the total. What, what's the status of those applications? Um, thank you for asking. So the historic tax credit application um, has been submitted. I believe it's round 28, 29. 29 I, sorry, I can't keep track. So it's round 29. It's an application with the state of Ohio. Um, it has been submitted and we won't find out if we have the award until December. And what about the other two? Sure, so the um, federal historic tax credit portion is not competitive. So simply by the building being eligible, those are the anticipated funds. Um, and for the new market tax credits, that's not something that we should be pursuing until we're closer to construction. But we do have a consultant that is going to be working on that with us. And Madam Chair, one more question, please. Uh, has the, the cost of construction of everything's going up rapidly? 
Has that been incorporated into your estimates and how has it impacted your planning? My short answer is yes. If you want a longer answer, Eric from um, Shook might want to chime in, but that has been considered. Do you want a longer answer? A little bit. I warn them that they have to be here in case there's a question. Uh, that is a great question, and I, I appreciate that because that's uh, we've experienced a lot of that um, escalation in the current market. Excuse if, me, can you state your name for the record, please? Yes, it's Thank Eric Grader with Shook Construction. Um, and Marin had done a nice job of breaking down the project budget. If you see here, one of the last lines in there, 2.3 million, is including some escalation costs based on the project being estimated um, in the current time frame and not being construction for another six to uh, six months to a year. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Madam Chair, just since we're clarifying potential financing sources, uh, the loan at 4.5 million, what's the source, I'm sorry. Yes, um, so we all have already secured um, a term sheet from PNC for six and a half million, um, but we want to try and um, borrow as less as possible. Um, so that's kind of a placeholder. And then um, your historic tax credits, um, I'm assuming your consultant has told you that if your um, construction costs go up, you can potentially have more tax credits that are available on the federal piece, on the Ohio piece. Whatever you get from them is what you get from them. Can my consultant come up and respond? <laughs> Thank you. My name is Wendy Naylor. I'm a historic consultant with Naylor Wellman, and you are very well informed. <laughs> the federal tax credit, when we put the Ohio historic tax credit application in, uh, we estimate the amount because we don't know, but you're absolutely correct. We will uh, go with the invoices actually incurred, and that will be 20%, um, uh, the tax credit will be 20% of the actual invoices incurred. Do you have a potential buyer for these tax credits? Um, that would be something that Marin and their group would be working with. I believe we have uh, an, uh, someone involved. Yeah, we have um, ideas in mind, but nothing solid right now. Your lender has not told you they're interested in acquiring them? They are. As part of the term sheet conditions, they have expressed interest in that, yes. But I think they're waiting for the award and the amount before the they award put a package of the Ohio together. Credits. Yeah, Ohio um, applications were just due this past Friday. And as you're aware, the announcements will come out in December. It's a very competitive round. Um, but they we're encouraged because they've increased the amount of money that's available. Previously, it had been $60 million a year available. It's now gone to $120 million available, Finally. which has also invited a lot more of applicants. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Madam Chair. Are you finished, Vice yes. President Stevens, Councilman Miller? Just to follow up, is is uh, would not getting the Ohio preservation tax credit would that be a deal breaker, or could you work around that? I I think the tax credit's very important to the project, and we're very hopeful about it. Yeah, um, we would re re reapply as well. Um, this is our third time applying. Um, so we'll just keep applying. In the previous two times that we applied, um, there was a bonus category for affordable housing. So although our application had the highest possible points, um, anyone that was submitting a project for affordable housing got bonus points and got bumped up. Um, but in this round, as um, Wendy has stated, the, the amount has increased um, as well as that bonus scoring has been removed. And, and that is going to be the status, I think, for the next four rounds. Correct. So we would just keep reapplying if we needed to. We hope we don't need to, though. Okay, thank you. Okay, without any further questions, I, I think you've answered the questions. Thank you, Ms. Rogers. We can, I can make a motion that this matter be moved to the next council meeting <clears throat> for second reading. I'd like to second this motion. I'd also like to be uh, added as a sponsor. 
All then, in favor? Uh, aye. 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 And then I'd like to make a slight statement. Okay. Uh, slight? Ever, ever, what do you every, mean by slight? <laughs> I mean slight. I mean less than two minutes. Um, as everyone who knows me knows, um, I'm a military brat, and I learned English in Okinawa, Japan. And so the work that um, the Rogers family has done to make GALA happen is tremendous and important in understanding diversity, not just um, in Cleveland, but these children will interact around the world as they grow up and become adults. It's incredibly important that more and more people understand uh, the benefits of a second language and how it helps broaden our thoughts, whether it's Chinese or Spanish. And so I am commending her on this labor of love that has turned into a vibrant business um, and is changing our community. And I'm glad that Councilman Miller um, decided this was a project that our funding, wasn't this Miller's or was this Whose was it? I think this is Councilman Sweeney's. This is Sweeney's? Yeah, and they're they're seeking Councilman Miller for um, his second round. Okay. I confused them when I did my homework. Sorry. Um, but I commend them on their work. Um, and, of course, the family lives in Cleveland Heights. Correct. Thank you. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank, thank you, so you so much. much. Good seeing you. Resolution 2022 oh, Wait, Madam Clerk, I just want to comment on Vice President Stevens that she was in Japan learning English but not learning the foreign language, right? Did you pick up both? You're not bilingual? I am not bilingual Japanese. I used to be with Spanish, but, you know, over the years, I've been learning Japanese. I almost lost it, but I understood the students who came up. That was shocking. Okay, good job. The Spanish. I got the Spanish. We begin. <laughs> Gracias. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on. Thank you for coming in. Okay, next item. Zero three three five resolution twenty twenty two zero three three five authorizing the Department of Public Works to utilize a total sum not to exceed fifty thousand dollars for the purpose of capital improvements at the Cuyahoga County Animal Shelter from the District Eleven ARPA Community Grant Fund. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, I'm uh, Mindy Naccioni. I'm the Animal Shelter Administrator for the Cuyahoga County Animal Shelter. Thank you for having us. So we're here for the multi-purpose addition. Um, and just as a little background, so um, the animal shelter takes in lost and stray dogs only. And over the course of my tenure with the county for the last nine years, our licensing program, which is our main funding source, has been uh, dwindling. During the closure for COVID and we started really reevaluating this program, we wanted to make big changes so that this became more successful for our own funding. We've grown as an agency um, and we made the difficult decision to move the general services team, which helps process the 60 some thousand dog licenses for the county into our building. By doing so, we gave away our conference room. Um, and at the sacrifice of building our revenue and streamlining that department, helping us collaborate as an agency, be a more organized and independent agency for our dog licenses and for our dog owners in the county, um, we gave up that space. As we have grown and that program turned its first successful year in 2021 when we moved them in to an uh, increase of 6.2%. Now, though, the animal shelter has given up some of our community programs as well as just our general ability to get together and meet because we no longer have a space. Um, so we are here for that, that room. Um, with the addition, we would be looking at creating a multi-purpose space that would bring back some of the programming we let go of. Um, we had built a humane education program for the community in which we go into schools, we host schools, we teach about the importance of pet ownership, responsible pet ownership, um, volunteerism, and how you can be active with pets in your community. We uh, will be able to bring back all of our corporate volunteerism as well as all of our club volunteerism, which spends a lot of time with Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, youth groups, which we have not been able to house since we no longer have the space. 
Uh, we will bring back our trainings for our local animal control officers in Cuyahoga County, as well as the cause meeting, which is the Cuyahoga Animal uh, Warden Society. We were always the meeting hub for them. We can no longer house them. So we'll be bringing those back as well. And then we'll be looking at bringing on some revenue generating programs. So for individuals who might be receiving citations for their dog licensing, we'd be looking at doing a diversion program for them offering behavior and training classes with our new behavior coordinator position, having small birthday parties, anything we can do that would be animal centric and revenue generating. Um, we also work with the Department of Emergency Management and we have not been able to assist in the few calls that they've given to us for disaster relief in animal housing. Um, we've had a couple instances where unfortunately we no longer have a safe place when there is an emergency to house people's animals in the county. So we'll be able to use this space as a flex for that as well. Um, and our playgroups. So our playgroups are the foundation of what we do for the dogs in our care. And our loyal staff and volunteers spend 365 outside as well as our dogs. So this room will also is being designed such that we can have the dogs inside during inclement weather as well as the humans so, so that they aren't exposed to all of the Ohio weather. Um, and then, of course, our team has no place to meet. So we are very large on trying to do team building, keeping things really positive. We can go back to having our monthly meetings in a space that is appropriate, interviews, just general meetings. Um, and while moving general services down to our building has been incredibly successful, it's been at the sacrifice of doing some business. So we are moving forward with that. Um, we, we do have some donations that were made in the form of bequests to the animal shelter that we'll be bringing to the project. Um, we were lucky enough to be the recipients of two of those. Um, so those will be added on as well. I'm sorry, I tried to be fast there. So <laughs> are there any questions I can answer? Any questions of the committee? I'm good with this. Right. So how you said that since you've moved internally, moved the General Gee, services. Yeah. What, how is that? It's going well. Uh, we've streamlined so many processes. Um, we're now moved into new and creative ideas that we wanted to put in place before that we couldn't. They're just being in that same building, we're able to bounce things off of one another in, in a very different way because we're working collaboratively, our team with the general services team. Um, it's been very successful. Do you and think revenue's going up because of this? In 2021, we saw a 6.2% increase in licenses. Um, yeah, so 2022 is tending to be a little bit flat. Um, but we don't attribute that to the department as much as maybe some of the economic impacts that we're seeing. And so will this space accommodate the play group inside then? It will, Cold it will. Mm -hmm. And I want the committee to know, and maybe Mindy, you can speak to the success under your tenure of how we're doing with nationally as, as a leader, most animal shelters that are county based don't have the same rate of saving dogs that we have. Can you speak to those numbers? We, we do. So um, probably the number one question I get asked is, are we a no-kill shelter? Um, in the world of animal welfare, no-kill means that you euthanize 10% or less of your population. As a leader, I don't like that language because I think it's confusing. But um, the CCAS has been at 5%. Uh, euthanasia for several years now. Um, we, when I started in 2013, we were close to an 18% euthanasia, and the two years prior were as high as 46%. Um, so we've driven that number down under 10% for, I think, since 2015, and we have remained there. And a lot of that is part of our playgroup. We brought playgroups on in 2015. We have been invited a few times actually to be a training location, but we didn't have anywhere to train the other, the other agencies, and our hope would be able to potentially use this room for that as well. Um, all of the programming that we do around our dogs, whether it's training with our staff, training with our volunteers, or just the amount of community that we've gotten involved with what we do has really driven that number down. So we've been really successful. We've been named the, um, in 2018, we were named Ohio's best shelter um, by the Ohio County Dogs Wardens Association. We've received several accolades. We actually currently have um, one of our deputy dog wardens is going through Maddie's Fund as uh, for an apprenticeship for humane education. So she can broaden her skills and really learn to do more and put it out back into Cuyahoga County residents and community members. Yeah, I just want to thank you, Mindy, Nicole, and Public Works for everything you've done. I mean, I can't understate the significance of the change of, at that shelter since we came into our new government in 2011. It was a complete mess. Dogs were being killed just at exponential rates. It was horrifying. 
And now we are a national leader. Mindy speaks at best friend conferences and is asked to educate other counties on how to do this. This is not something that's been common of a county shelter to be able to reach these numbers is really a, a, a remarkable feat. Thank and you. it really has to, it's attributed to the leadership and support from, from public works and us that, you know, I just want to commend you and, you know, I can be proud now to <laughs> send dogs to, to the county shelter because um, before it was not a, it was scary and we had to avoid it actually. Thank you. Yeah, we're Welcome. very proud. We're very proud of what we put out as a team. Thank you, Mindy. And so any questions? Okay. I'm going to make a motion that this matter be moved to the next full council meeting with a recommendation of passage for second reading. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Resolution 2022-0336, supporting an application for funding under the Clean Ohio Fund Green Space Conservation Program available through the Ohio Public Works Commission on behalf of the West Creek Conservancy for the conservation of ecologically significant areas in the Chippewa Creek Conservation Corridor in the city of Broadview Heights. Eric and Allison. Hello. Um, I'm Allison Ball with Cuyahoga County Planning Commission, and I'm the liaison to the Ohio Public Works Commission, and the Clean Ohio Green Space Conservation Program is a program through the Ohio Public Works Commission. And I want to thank you, Councilwoman Simon, and the committee members for your consideration of the resolutions of support for the Clean Ohio grant applications. Just a reminder, we come up every year in front of you. The resolutions of support are a statutory requirement as determined by the Ohio Revised Code, Section 164.23. The applications um, for the round 2022-2023 program year are due on Friday, October 14th, 2022. The applications will be evaluated and scored by an 11 member Natural Resources Assistance Council for Cuyahoga County, um, November through February. And projects that do not have these required resolutions of support will not be evaluated. So it's important for the resolutions of support to come through before the applications even go in. So um, we had two before you, but we only have one. And I'll let Derek speak to the first one. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Derek Schaefer with West Creek Conservancy, and uh, this is one of our more simple applications to the Clean Ohio Green Space Program. It's in partnership with the City of Broadview Heights, and it's approximately 54 acres, uh, basically between Avery, uh, Route 82, and I-77. It's all within the uh, balanced growth plan that's endorsed within the Chippewa Creek watershed, and about nine acres of wetland and 3,100 linear feet of stream. So it's just an acquisition to book in the corridor and continue to conserve land in partnership with the city and the regional sewer district. Thank you. Any questions? We usually as a council support all these projects. It doesn't matter whose district it lies. So uh, it's important work. I appreciate it. What, what do you think about the chances of these, this one? I ask myself that every year. Oh, got it. Um, I mean, they're fair. Okay. I mean, there's going to be good projects coming in from a multitude of partners, but we always go in with strong applications for conservation and restoration and uh, try to bring in as many partners as we could. Hard for me to put a percentage on it, though. I don't want to talk myself off. <laughs> I will laud Derek's work at West Creek. It's amazing. You've expanded and been able to amass and acquire just such delicate, important green space wetlands that's just um, so vital to the to the future of this county when we are facing climate change, when we have nature's way to filter through what's going to be happening. Thank you. So thank you. No, it's amazing. Um, is this something that we need to expedite? Applications are due on October 14th. Um, respectfully request that the committee recommend the resolutions be adopted under a suspension vote. Is that okay. okay. So, so moved. For this one, mm -hmm. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Second. 
Are we going to oh, address? Can I add my name as a sponsor? Sure, and I'll add my name to both. Of, are we going forward with 0337? No, we are not. Okay. Um, I received an email, and again, these uh, resolutions of support requests come in as they're working on the applications, and the negotiations for the property um, have fallen through, and they will not be submitting. And I did double check because if the resolution of support went through this year, they could come back in a future funding round, but they did say they will not be pursuing this in the future. Okay. So we're going to just remove that from the agenda. Thank you. Okay. So it will be on for second reading, Derek, next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So anything else for the good order? Well, we'll adjourn. And Thank you. Madam Chair, if I could just clarify, you, that was second reading suspension on the... Second reading suspension. Yes. Yep. Thank you.